Morning. Today's thought for the day is cheerfulness. The parallels between Mr. Cheerful and Aristotle may not be immediately apparent. One is a round cartoon character who, as part of the Mr. Men series, came into existence in 1990. A bright orange individual who has a smile pretty much as big as his circular body and who wears a particularly chic yellow bowler hat with a blue stripe. The other was a Greek philosopher and polymath during the classical period in ancient Greece. One lived in Happy Land, while the other lived in Athens. One had only three isolated hairs which he kept securely under his hat. The other is said to have fussed around with his hair and sported a fine virile beard, which as an aside is clearly a sign of great erudition and scholarship. One is one of the most cheerful people you are ever likely to meet, never without a smile. The other was a serious academic who made significant contributions to the fields of science, medicine and mathematics, to ethics and politics, to dance and theatre. As I say, the parallels may not be immediately apparent. And yet in one key value, they shared exactly the same philosophy. Aristotle claimed that happiness or cheerfulness depends on ourselves. More than anybody else, right up to the modern day, Aristotle cherished happiness as a central purpose of human life and a justifiable goal in itself. What he meant by the claim, happiness depends on ourselves, was that he was convinced that a genuinely happy life required the fulfilment of a broad range of conditions including physical as well as mental well-being. In this way, in the classical period two and a half thousand years ago, well before well-being entered common parlance, he introduced to the world the formal idea of a science of happiness. According to Aristotle, happiness, or eudaimonia in Greek, consisted of achieving through the course of a whole human lifetime all the necessary constituent parts such as health and knowledge, etc., that lead to the perfection of human nature and to the enrichment of human life. Of these parts, for Aristotle, however, friendship was one of the most important virtues in achieving this goal of happiness. While he argued there were different types of friendship, the highest was the one that was based on virtue, on arater, where individuals, through an innate sense of generosity, wish the very best for their friends, without agenda, without thought for themselves. The simple act of making a difference to others, improving their lives, being cheerful and positive in disposition. A life without friendship was therefore meaningless. In the 1500s, this same sentiment was shared by Michel de Montaigne, one of the most significant philosophers of the French Renaissance, who noted that the most certain sign of inner wisdom is cheerfulness. Aristotle also acknowledged that man is by nature a social animal. In other words, man cannot live in isolation. This is just one of the many reasons why this period of self-isolation has proved so challenging, as it runs totally counter to a man's innate natural instincts. At times of threat or distress, man's natural reaction is to gather together for solace, for comfort and for strength. In the absence of our ability to do that, this period of isolation has strongly reminded us all of the importance of family and friends, and how without this interaction, our lives lack genuine focus and fulfilment. Texting, FaceTime, WhatsApp, Snapchat, Instagram, Zoom, house party, all of these have enjoyed a huge leap in popularity and usage. And this is hardly surprising. In a world where all too often we use lack of time as an obstacle, as an excuse, suddenly everyone has had quality time for each other. Everyone wants to connect, everyone wants to chat. Arguably, friendship has never been more important, has never had higher profile in our pursuit of happiness, in our pursuit of cheerfulness. So, although Aristotle, Mr Cheerful, and the current period of self-isolation may not share obvious parallels, 
the importance and value of friendship in contributing to our happiness, our cheerfulness, our well-being continue to endure. As all who encountered Mr Cheerful acknowledged, everyone around him couldn't help but feel cheerful. Even the flowers smiled when Mr Cheerful walked past. Everyone he met went away feeling happy and cheerful. If we can follow in his footsteps and make everyone whom we encounter feel better, then this is surely a philosophy which will more than stand the test of time. Cheers to that. Thank you.